What is going on, my Super Sandwiches? Ramsa here, and today it is time for some more Dragon Ball Xenoverse news, just like I did two years ago. If you're new to my channel, I will keep you guys in the loop with anything Dragon Ball related, especially in the games. And when it comes down to Xenoverse 2, I will let you guys know all the bit of news as it happens when it happens. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not, and I'll keep you guys in the loop. So, in case you missed it, Xenoverse 2 just got announced the other day, and we have some new information courtesy of ShonenGames.com as well as VJump. So, as always, if you want to see the article for yourself, I will link it in the description below. But the news today is going to excite a lot of you guys. In case you guys uh, missed the 2016 date on the trailer, it is coming out this year, and now, according to the skin, it is coming out winter 2016 this year, which is pretty exciting. Now, I will note one important detail which is probably not important to a lot of you guys, but this game is exclusive for the PS4 in Japan for some reason. In case you guys didn't hear, the game is coming out on the Xbox One, PC, and PS4. For the looks of it, no 360 and PS3, it's only on current gen, but in Japan, they're only doing it on the PS4, and you're probably wondering why. Well, to answer that question, the reason why is because Xenoverse 1 sold pretty bad on the Xbox One and the Xbox 360, and I guess from the business standpoint, it makes sense to not even release it on the old consoles just because, or on the Xbox console, just because it might cost more money to do that than the money they'll make back. I'm talking about they sold li literally like a thousand copies. That's how bad it was. That's why Japan is sticking to a PS4 exclusive only, but the rest of the world, lucky enough for us, we get on the Xbox One, PC, and PS4, so get excited there. So let's go ahead and read the scan and see what new information we have. So other than the release date and release window, there's history I can't afford losing, which sounds like weird English, I don't really know. Save the DB history, re-experience the energy and passion of Xenoverse franchise and this brand new story, head out into the unknown world of destroyed timelines, which we already know. It's basically the whole Xenoverse spiel that we saw in the last game. But there are also moments I want to change. Now this is the most important part about the scan. Initially when I made my breakdown, I pointed out how it says that, that you can change timelines. And I think in this game, as opposed to the last one, you can do that. And specifically it says, it is your job as a time patrol to prevent any change to the timeline, but there are also moments in history that even you would like to see differently, could it be in this game? You can. And it looks like moments like, for example, being able to, uh, to save future Gohan instead of letting him get killed by Android 17 and 18, that's going to be a possibility in this game. Now the question is, is what kind of repercussions does that do? I feel like what's going to happen is, as you experience the timeline this time, you can actually change time, and in you doing that, it causes massive differences. In this situation, if Future Gohan survived, then what if they never went back in time? What if they did go back in time with Future Gohan, but something else happened that led to XYZ happening, and maybe, you know, Teen Gohan never went Super Saiyan 2 for whatever reason? There's a lot of stuff that, you know, the timeline, the small timeline change could do that would cause a drastic difference in the overall timeline. And that's something that's gonna be very exciting about this game. Honestly, that's something that I wanted to see with the last game and I was hoping would happen, but in the last game, of course, all, all we got was being able to fix the timeline and having stuff happen the way it's supposed to be. But this time, it's very different. Here are the stories of the alternative futures. Face the demons of the past and take the future in your own hands. Memories of absolute destruction and pain. The Emperor of Space laughs to himself as the lone warrior enters the void and disappears. Now again, here's another example of being able to change that moment. What if you save Bardock, which we know in uh, the episode of Bardock special that came out a couple years ago, he got sent into the past, but that's probably not the case in this game. What if instead of uh, you know him dying, he gets saved, and then that leads to him killing Frieza later? He kills Frieza, and then you know there's no need for Namek to ever happen. What if like stuff like you see what I'm saying? How this game could be very intricate when it comes down to like a brand new Dragon Ball experience, and that has me very much excited. Now again, I really hope that that's the case here, and that happens mostly because I remember when Xenos first came out. My biggest worry was for the next game is how could they do this again without having it be basically redundant again? Because let's be real here, if they have the Xenos 2 story be the exact same thing like Xenos 1 was, where you basically go back and fix timelines, it'll be cool. But at the same time, you can kind of be like, yeah, I've already done this. But being able to actually change the history and seeing the repercussions that happen and like being able to save certain people from dying, like future Gohan, or you know, saving someone like Bardock from getting killed by Freeze and having to come back and exact his revenge would be amazing. And that's an incredible new way to experience the Dragon Ball timeline and story that I would love to see, which I'm sure a lot of you guys will agree with. And if you disagree, let me know why. And if you agree, make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts on that idea. But ultimately, I'm pretty much excited. This Xenoverse 2 game has me super hyped, and I cannot wait to see what Winter 2016 has in store for us when we go back to saving the timeline. So let me know your thoughts on everything that I just discussed. And again, if you want to read the article for yourself, I will link it in the description below. As always, much love to ShonenGames.com for these awesome translations. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will keep you guys in the loop as it happens when it happens, and you guys can know everything that you need to know as we get closer to this game. So yeah. Also, uh, just something else I want to note, the Japan Expo, which is going to be, I believe, like July 10th to July 12th, is going to have a playable demo of this game. So, 
it sounds like they're just so done with the game, which is kind of exciting, but at the same time, it could be also terrifying. So let's see, you know, let's see what they have in store for us. And also, I want to know before I end the video that Bandai has promised this to be the most detailed Dragon Ball game of all time. Again, something I want to kind of uh, mention real fast before I end the video is when it comes down to creating Xenoverse, making the first game is always the most difficult part. And I actually have a video going up with Danny of Jadentastic in a couple of days where we discuss this. But a lot of people are kind of worried whether or not this game has come out too soon, if they had enough sufficient time to develop it and all that stuff. And the answer is yes, they did. The first game always takes like three years, let's say. That's exactly how long Xenoverse 1 took. But once you have the initial body of the game, the blueprint, the skeleton, you can take that and basically make it better and add features and all that stuff. So even though it sounds like they only had a year to build the game, which is a year and a half, two years or so, because uh, they did, you know, register Xenoverse2.com back in December 2014, which is about two years ago. That is more than enough time to build a second game, a sequel. Because like I said, all you do at this point is you did all the hard work. At this point, all you do is take the current assets and resources and make a better game and that's the situation with Xenoverse 2 and something else to point out before in this video is Budokai 1, 2, and 3 all had literally a year apart like I'm talking about Budokai 1 came out like 2002 October the 2003 October the 2004 October like it was literally like a year apart and same thing goes Tenkaichi and remember Tenkaichi 1 and Tenkaichi 2 was a drastic difference in improvement like it is literally two different games Tenkaichi 1 was a bad game in my opinion but Tenkaichi 2 and 3 were just absolutely beautiful and with that said since those games only had a year you can only imagine how much they improved with this game. I mean, a lot of us love Xenoverse. There's a couple people here and there that don't like Xenoverse just because they prefer other fight styles like the 2D fight style we saw in Burst Limit and Budokai. Some prefer, you know, other games like Raging Blast. But for, for what Xenoverse was, a lot of us loved. And if you enjoyed Xenoverse, I can guarantee that you will more than love this next game. And that's the exciting part as we get closer to the release of this game. So with them saying that they're making the most detailed drama game of all time and they're revealing quite a bit of information already, I can only imagine what else is there to reveal. So as we get closer to E3, I'll keep you guys in the loop, like I said. I'm going to go to E3 myself and hopefully they'll have the game there. And anything else that happens over the summer, I will report it as it happens when it happens. So make sure you stay tuned, subscribe, and you, you guys all, you all, excuse me, will be in the know to understand what's going on with this game. So yeah. Anyway, so let me know your thoughts on the most recent news. Do you have any questions, comments, feedback, drop me a comment. As always, if you're hyped for Xenoverse 2, push that like button right in the face, and we'll take them from there. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day. My name is Rhymestyle, and I'll see you all your awesome super sandwiches in the comment section below. Peace.